scored any, and those bad shots are going the other way on us. And, you know, quite honestly, they're 10 for 19 in shooting because they've been getting high-quality shots in transition. Thanks, Coach. Looking to turn it around, guys. You think the Terps just giving up 7.6 goals a game, 10th best in the NCAA coming in as we check out the Diet Coke game track, Quint. Matt Zash, a career best, three goals. I think you talk about a diversified attack for Duke. Got a lot of different goal scorers, but uh, Zash having a season-high three goals. Uh, had four last year against Army. And then the, the goaltending. Aaron Fenton has been uh, extremely solid. Meanwhile, Harry Alford is really struggling uh, right now, not seeing the ball uh, because Duke has taken such high percentage shots. There's Alford. Right now, as a goalie, he's got to shake this off. He, he's got to some way find a way to get back to his his self because he is a very very talented goalie who struggled through a first half of lacrosse well done massive face-off man of the x for maryland wins the opening draw they lost eight of ten to the turps in the first half and the second half of our first semi-final underway from philadelphia Dave Cottle's words with GD a moment ago. Can the Turks limit transition play? Much better in the X. That's a good start by winning the first faceoff in the second half. But Joe Walters has got to get going here, Quinn. Completely shut down. Sportsman two goals. McGlone the other. That's been it. Brendan Healy's shot. Partially deflected by Fenton. As he stands tall in his first test. Here's McDevitt. Long stick. O'Hara. Another long stick. He's got two points already in this game. How about some more? Nick O'Hara <laughs> scores! Can you believe the big guy with a six-foot pole, his second goal of the game? And an assist for three points. Incredible offensive source for Mike Pressler. Love the outlet pass upfield, but look at the two-handed power cradle, dealing with those checks, putting the ball in the corner. Folks, lacrosse has changed to the point where these defenders now, with the light titanium sticks, they are offensive threats. They're the best athletes on the field. Six foot, 200 pounds. There's the reaction on the Duke bench. And they're a, they're a legitimate threat. You've got to take the body. Take a look at O'Hara. He's all smiles on the sideline. But I love the way Duke is sprinting from defense to offense. Brad Ross wins possession. McDevitt on the outlet pass coming on the wing of the faceoff. Lost the handle initially, then kicks it. Out of bounds, so Maryland will get it back. Nick O'Hara had two goals on the season coming in. He's got two today. The long pole has been tremendous. Preseason. Honorable mention, all American pick from Western New York. Orchard Park just outside Buffalo. It's hard enough for Dave Cottle's troops to shut down the attack. And the front line midfielders of Duke, much less the long sticks. Well, Schwartzman was the key guy in the first half. Two goals, and McGlone scored, and all of those goals were unassisted. So Duke has been slow to double team Maryland, but that's because Maryland hasn't really penetrated. A legal procedure at the substitution box upfield against the Maryland Terrapins. Cottle can't believe it, and that is a turnover to Duke. So you come out, you hope to turn this game around. Duke scores early, uh, and then you make a mental mistake on offense. With a long stick scoring, no less. Duke at 79% of their clear attempts successful. Coming into this semifinal game, Marshall has scored one in the first half. Makes the pass for Thompson. What's up, what's up, Danowski and Greer, right? Zach Greer, 54 goals and counting for the freshman. What a story. Thompson left-hand cradle, spins, a pass in the slot, penalty flags, fly, two, fly as Flannery was decked. And you can hear it very clearly. Slash call coming on Steve Wittenberg, the transfer from Air Force for Maryland. That was referee David Sloan from Charlottesville making the call. Yep, we're in the alley, right here, man. Wittenberg trailing this play. You play defense with your feet. And he was just trailing the play a little too much. Referee Hans Wittelsberger gets us going. 
Tugas cashed in on its only man up try so far in this game. Dan Flannery leads the way this year with six man up tallies. Jack Greer had four coming into the semifinal tilt for the Turks. Top left of your screen, you can see that one minute non releasable slash penalty being kicked down. And front sash again, going for a sport that would tie a career high, but it's over the crossbar as his stick was partially blocked. Wittenberg awaits his release. Duke changing their set from a 2 3 1 to a 1 4 1 back to a 3 3. Danowski, the key trigger man up top, right here. He's the passer. Down low, look for Greer, picked off. Good play by Lang. And the Turks bounce out the other way. He is the Sledgehammer Award winner. It appears for the biggest hits throughout the season. Ryan Lang, 11 in a red jersey. Gets to carry a sledgehammer around with him in the offseason. But the Terps hope that offseason doesn't start right now. They've got a big mountain to climb. Eight goal deficit against powerful Duke. Both these teams known for their physical style of play. Lacrosse combining the, some aspects of football. You can jack a guy up as hard as you want, as long as it's with your shoulder or elbow and down low, not up and around the helmet. That's awful exciting to compete in this sport when you know you can tee somebody up. Pick it up, pick it up. Pick McGlone it up. spins and fires, but it's off cage again, backed up by Xander Ritz. Joe McGlone surviving stick gate last week. And Coach Dave Cottle told us that stick that was involved in the controversy was thrown in the trash heap immediately. <laughs> it will never be used again. And Bill has a new stick this week. And all sticks on the Maryland side were thoroughly checked. Brendan Healy denied by Fenton. Great save his 10th of the day. He's been brilliant in between the pipes. Aaron Fenton, our first team All-American goalie this season. He came out of nowhere. There he is, there's Coach Pressler. There is Aaron Fenton, the left-hander, senior from Choate. Big, I, I tell you, this guy's six foot 200. He really fills it up. He's been so consistent all year. Good in every game, great in some, and he's the best clearing goalie that I have seen in the past four or five years, his outlet passes. Although today he's maybe a little over aggressive on some, but you really see the impact he has as, a, as an offensive guy, triggering their transition game. As Dave and Lee told us in the studio, first team All-American, that squad announced at halftime here on ESPN2 broadcast. Matt Danowski of Duke on that team. Jed Proster of North Carolina. John Walker of Army. Graham Gill of Navy. Kyle Harrison also. There's Walters denied. Rebound was loose for Ian Healy. Tried a behind the back shot. And one more time, Fenton shuts the door, showing us why he is a first team All American. Look who's got the ball on his cross again. It's O'Hara. <laughs> That's got to be a nightmare for Maryland to see him charging upfield. With a long stick, no less. I think offensively, Duke will keep it very vanilla. You may see them run three midfields now in the second half with this lead. This is their second group. Substitutions are on the fly, like hockey. You want to keep your midfielders fresh. Thompson right hand cradle. Watched by Ian Healy. Get upside down. And Flannery crosses right in front of the cage in front of Harry Alford. What we in? What we in? So tough the last time these teams met, but it's been all Duke today. Thompson works for Donowski. Brilliant attackman for Duke, who's continued his great season. Got double team and strip. Nice play made. Great double. Ryan Clark with a long stick broke that play up. Starts the charge the other way here for the Terps. They need something, a real shot of the arm. Down by eight. Fifty-six seconds left in overtime. That's when Schwartzman won it last week against Georgetown. Healy's try. Another stick save. It's Fenton one more time. Twelfth save of the day for Aaron Fenton. What? You got two of the best in the business. Joe Walters taking it to the cage strong. Watch this little swim move over the top. Sensational. The second team All-American down low, but Fenton robs him five hole and then covers up his rebound. Fenton has had all the answers. So cool and calm. If you asked me at the beginning of the year where I thought Aaron Fenton would end up at the end of the year, he wouldn't have been in my top 10 goalies nationally at the beginning of the year. 
and yet here he is as the first-team All-American. Nice ride, big hit by... Tony, they're jumping there. Xander Ritz, older of the Ritz brothers. Old from the Philly area. Fenton's got 12 saves, Quint. He had 12 in the first two rounds each. McGlone finally beats Aaron Fenton's second goal of the day for Bill McGlone, involved in stick gate last week with the emotion, the pressure of hoping his teammate Andrew Schwartzman would keep the Terp season alive. Well, that happened, and now he's got two today. McGlone got off to a great start the first three or four games this year, had a little shoulder injury. But he was just an amazing high school basketball player at Ridley. And here you see the inside roll done so well. Comes up, does a 360, a couple stick fakes, balls in the back of the net. His talent is endless. Uh, really bright future in the sport of lacrosse, his freelance ability. Red move, white ball, wait. His step dad, over, William, step over, step told over. Andrew Schwartzman, step over. Bill's got to buy you dinner for the next year, my friend, after helping us out. We're coming here from Lincoln Financial Field, Philadelphia. Great crowd today. Glad you can join us. Hey, Brian Quinn, Kesnick, Janine Edwards. Aboard with you from the link in Philadelphia, the national semifinals. Maryland, lower seed in the red. Looking for his first national title since 1975. Duke has never won a lacrosse national championship. They've never been in a title game. That's about to change today. Eight minutes left in our third quarter. Seven goal, Duke lead. Last year we had that huge crowd, semifinal Saturday in the T-Bank Stadium in Baltimore. The final, the crowd was held down by terrible weather. The final between Navy and Syracuse. Play on interference call against Duke. So Maryland will get it back. And yet again, we are amazed by the turnout at the lacrosse national semifinal. The sport just growing like wildfire across the country. Schools in California now play varsity high school lacrosse. Florida, Ohio, Texas, Utah, Oregon. A lot of people have marked their calendars and they're flying here to Philly for this weekend. Two games today, two tomorrow, and then the national championship game on Memorial Day. Well, what a day, Petra Mall, the Hopkins head coach, tell us. The next big hotbed for recruiting, Southern California. You can see it. The sport is growing by leaps and bounds. The kids are taking their baseball glove and uh, replacing it with a lacrosse stick. So much to enjoy. This game is a great game to participate in. Dave Matz works for Walters. Matz the return pass after the pick and funny go. Sharp angle. Never enough room to beat Fenton, who shut him down against that far post beautifully. And it's backed up by the Terps and Walters. There you see old and young. Women and men. Say women's lacrosse at the college level because of gender equity in Title IX. It's just exploding. Northwestern winning the Division I Women's Championship this year. That's for Walters trying to get on the board. Joe Walters has been shut out today, the great sniper of Maryland. And Dave Matz backs it up again for the Turks. Seems so unlikely. First career game. Walters was shut out against Duke. It's happened here again today so far. Will it continue? Maryland likes to do their two-man Pick and roll game watch behind roll the case. Watch, watch, watch Walters now set a pick. Turn him that. Two hands. Right here. Turn on. That can change oh, matchups, uh, and that can create an advantage in terms of your dodging to the net. Just like basketball. It's a little two-man pick and roll game. It's Walters. Left hand cradle gets a pick. And finally, he scores. Joe Walters, first point of the day on a nifty quick release. Fenton just didn't see it coming. Make it 11-5. This is just, just a nasty left-handed shot to the far corner. Severe angle. Walters knows where the net is, doesn't yeah. even have to look. What do you mean, over the and he sees the net flicker and wrinkle, and he knows the white line. Wait for he's the got line. another one. And He's been scoring ever since he walked on campus at College Park. His first scrimmage off of the Carrier Dome as a freshman, six goals in the scrimmage against the Orange in seven shots. So he has been just an immediate scorer here. He's been in the starting lineup from day one. Duke on the attack. Ross, who took the draw, winds, and it's just wide. Uh, Harry Alford, you know, Walters' eighth goal of the tournament scored here today, 13th career tournament goal for Joe Walter. Hopes his back it up, back attorney it up, days as a junior are not about to end. Good shot of Ross sprinting off the field. Substituting now for, for a 
an offensive midfielder. What's a great? What's a club? Donowski is chasing Tony Cohen's all-time Duke point record of 90. Set back in 1979. Donowski does have an unassisted goal so far. And an assist. Getting closer. Queer scores! He pulls the trigger so quickly. Second of the day for the fabulous freshman from Whitby, Ontario, Canada. Coach Bressler said the biggest lesson we learned when we lost to Maryland in the ACC championship, we didn't pass the ball. And like Illinois basketball this year with D. Brown, you got to spin the rock. And how about that shot from the freshman Zach Greer? Drops it down low, yanks it up high. The reaction, total Duke dominance. 2005 ACC Rookie of the Year has now taken over Merrick Thompson of Albany for the NCAA Division I goal scoring lead. Pick it up. Push call. Pick it up. Procedure Pick it up. against Maryland off the draw, so Duke will get it right back. And what a story from Greer overcoming the loss of his father, Dan, who passed away after what was essentially a two year battle with cancer, January 31st. He has his dad's initials. DG, piece of tape on his helmet. Dedicates his season, his games to his father, who introduced him to the game up in Canada. Zash trying to get loose again. Has been so elusive. Zach Root tells us his teammates rallied around him. He's in the offseason. His father passed on. Cell phone calls, emails, text messages every day. Mom's here with his brother Bill and sister Kaylee, and she plays goalie at Hamilton College. And as a kid, Zach used to say, hey, Kaylee, suit up. Get in on your equipment. I want to shoot on you. <laughs> That's not a great place to be for Kaylee. Here's Zach again. Trying to get free through a double team. Stays passing. Oh, he just crushed. Penalty flags he fly. He had it. Ladder yep, is right on the crease, too. 24 red. And Wittenberg's going to go again. 24 red. 30 seconds. Push. You heard it. 30 seconds. Technical red. call. Steve Wittenberg. Push. Yep, he had it. Woo. 24. Absolute bone crushing hit. How does the ball stay in the stick of Zach Kerr? Look at this. Look at this dexterity. It's still in his pocket. He's being pounded on. And then the big hit by Wittenberg. Look at Greer. Coach Presser said he's a one-timer. The transition from box to field was very easy. You tell him once and he learns. It sticks. Wow. Great student. He's gone from the four by four goal at that level. Playing box. Lobby's shot is wide. Six by six goal here in the field game. And Zach told us this week the adjustment's been pretty easy because his hand-eye coordination built up in the box game. He was a big Joe Newendike fan both as a lacrosse player and a hockey star. Height no. on a sharp angle shot there from Zach Greer. I tell you, the, the Canadian impact in college lacrosse has been around forever. Stan Cockerton, NC State, and Dave Huntley of Hopkins. Paul and Gary Gate, Mike Green. French, Tom Marichek. No. Zash. Hey, these guys are just such superb shooters. A.J. Shannon, who won the title for Virginia. And last week, we got to see a couple guys, uh, Sean Greenhall, and Jeff Zwicky, but uh, the Canadian goal scorers have always dominated uh, intercollegiate uh, lacrosse. They're just better goal scorers from inside. Yep. Zach played on that under-19 team in the World Games, 0-3 in Baltimore for Canada. It was brilliant, leading the Canadians to the final game. They took the silver medal, lost to several of his current Duke teammates on that American squad. Lomity, some room. Turtles, turtles. Man up is over. Back to six aside. Lacrosse, offensive end of the field for Duke. What's that side? What's that side? Match up. Dowd for Donowski. 16. 16. Son of a Hofstra coach. In he goes. Scores. Nope, off the side of the net. Excuse me, thought that was in. Saw the ripple. Side of the goal, no goal for Donowski and Duke. And Maryland breaks out. Turf to set it up here. Under three to go. Third quarter. Circle. Jason. Back right. Top right. 
little bit like the Cornell Duke game of last week, Quentin, you and I saw in Princeton, where Cornell fell so far behind in the third quarter. And with their style, it's just tough to bunch goals together. They don't make it easy for you offensively. Turn them back. They can possess the ball and play slow and chew into the clock. They learned a lot of lessons in that ACC final when they lost to the Terps. They were impatient on offense. They settled for bad shots. Greer and Janowski went one for 14 that day. Coach Presser said, we beat ourselves. Coming he back. was confident that they would play a much stronger game today. Walter spins, fires. That's in. Fenton thought he had that angle shut down on Walters. Did not, apparently. It snuck by him. He was surprised to see that cross the goal line, 12-6 game. He finds a way to score goals, and we've seen the versatility. You saw the swim move earlier. This is just a question mark dodge. His pattern will look like a question mark. He drives up right-handed, but you know his natural strength is his left hand, so he turns away from the goal, little jump shot left-handed, and he yanks it down low off of the foot of Aaron Fenton. Fenton was just holding his angles, and that's uh, something that'll happen as a goalie. You'll get a piece and the ball trickle in. But another shot from Joe Walters. Two unassisted goals now for the Terp sniper. Dave Tamburino, Maryland face-off midi, helps win that draw on the X for the Terps. Another two to go, third quarter, just down by six. There is a chance because of guys like Walters, but they're going to have to bunch some goals together, win a lot of face-offs like Tamburino did a moment ago. Walters has another. Joe Walters on a great move. It was in the net. It was in the net. His feet were down. His feet were down. And it's in the goal. 12 7 game hat trick. Joe Walters coming alive. Any kind of Maryland comeback's going to be on the shoulders of Bill McGlone or Joe Walters. This time, another inside roll. Severe angle. Boom. A little quick release. Falls in the back of the net. He does touch the crease there but the ball was already in the goal. Here it is again. One-handed cradle, using his body to shield his stick, and he beats Aaron Fenton to the spot, the reaction. Hat trick for Walters here, third quarter. He's up to 37. On the year, the 11th Terp in school history to go past 100 career goals. That happened this year against Navy, and the List goes on for Walters, who's got his team back in this game. Illegal procedure on that last faceoff. Tamburino for Maryland jumped the whistle. And you couldn't think about a worse time to jump the whistle. The team scored back-to-back -back goals. You're starting to get some momentum. And then you give Duke basically a free faceoff because you're antsy. So much of facing off comes down to those guys relaxing, boom, and then exploding on the whistle. And he just won a big uh, moments earlier. Great save off for rebound. Greer scores! There's not much Harry Alfred can do about the spectacular Zach Greer. He's got a hat trick. And Duke answers the Walters hat trick of the third quarter with a big goal here, 43 seconds left. Remember, indoor lacrosse is more compacted. The goals are small, smaller, it's played inside. Watch him flash to the net on the rebound, just anticipating the play better than his defenders. Boom, rebound comes off of Alfred's stick. He's able to corral it and redirect. We saw him do that last week, the exact same goal against Cornell. He's got to be boxed out. He's a great rebounder inside off of goalie rebounds. Uh, hat trick, another procedure call. This one goes against Duke before the draw even takes place. Will Dalton, the huge freshman from Maryland, will head off on a change now. Let's try to answer. Greer rallied around his teammates. His father's passing, especially Dan Flanner. Those two became very close friends. And now they're together on this extraordinarily talented attack. Up by six final moments of the quarter. Healy diving. May have been a bit off cage. Fenton trying to rake the rebound three. Cannot. In the final seconds, ball kicked around and loose. He's in a crease. And a crease violation call against Maryland with a rebound. Available for all to grab. 13 saves now in the game for Fenton. And that'll do it for the third quarter.
hat trick for Joe Walters of Maryland, trying to keep the Terps in this game. But Duke has been dominant. Tremendous play from Fenton. Although Walters in, does have a good effort this quarter. 13-7 after the three. Designed to start you like this. I know a girl with a golden touch. The Toyota Camry wasn't designed with a view like this. She's got enough, she's got too much. The Nissan Altima 2.5 wasn't designed with this much power. Like you could have it all if you want to do. You could have it all if it matters to you. The first ever Pontiac G6 was. Pontiac. Designed for action. And now there's one more way to enjoy a Diet Coke. Diet Coke sweetened with Splenda. Yeah, I have a little attitude, but I've earned it. I've put in the hours. I practice every day. I've learned from the best, and I have no doubt that I can play at the highest level. Right now, I'm guessing I'll end up in either Chicago or New Orleans. Most good jazz musicians do. There are over 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us are going pro in something other than sports. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of the NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships, presented by Warrior, the means to dominate. And in part by Bud Light, fresh, smooth, real, it's all here. Welcome back to the NCAA Lacrosse Championships presented by Warrior Lacrosse. Our officiating crew led by Tom Abbott of Syracuse, New York. A stick check, and that is the subject of the Home Depot Coaching Clinic from Kevin O'Leary of the NCAA. The measurements that we perform during the game, there are three measurements. The first measurement is it's 10 inches from the top of the stick to the, to the bottom of the stop or the top of the plastic. The second is that, it's no, that it has to be 40 inches to 42 inches for a short stick, 52 inches to 72 inches for a long. And the measurement at the top, the stick has to be six and a half inches or greater at the top. The only stick that can is six and a half to 10. The only stick to be greater than 10 is the goaltender stick. The ball sits in the plastic. We make sure that there's no space between the top of the ball and the bottom of the plastic. We take the ball perpendicular to the ground, stick perpendicular to the ground, rotate it horizontally, the ball has to come out. And lastly, hold the stick this way, rotate it both ways and make sure the ball comes out. Last week it was Bill McGlone's stick tested by Yurik and the coaching staff at Georgetown. The ball would not come out of the stick. It's the last test you saw it. Referee good, Kevin O'Leary. The goal was taken out. off the board. And it was a huge storyline. Actually made Sports no, Center. Stick. stick gate. What? Players forever have been trying Step to over. cheat with their sticks, pinching the plastic. Oh, yeah. Actually, to bake them in the oven to make them more narrow. Uh, I remember way back when in the 80s, guys used to bend their shafts. You're not allowed to do that anymore. What's up, right? What's up, so the referees now mandatory yeah, random checks at the end of the first and third quarter. Love that Sports oh, Center comparison with. The Pine Tar incident, George Brett, Yankee Stadium, KC Royals, that was something. Luckily for McGlone and for Maryland, things worked out well last weekend at Princeton. Oh, Greer, trying to erase all the good feelings today. He's been fabulous with a hat trick in front. Flannery, the quick stick goal again for Duke. Through traffic while being hit, Dan Flannery releases the shot somehow. Give him a hat trick and give Duke a seven goal lead. It's the second Duke goal today off of a scramble. Remember earlier, there was a shot taken, and Flannery fed Greer. This time, the ball's loose. 
It's a ground ball from Duke. Matt Zash, boom, directly attacks, goes right for the jugular. And it's Flannery in the right spot at the right time. And the Duke fans are all smiles today, standing up on their feet. They got a lot to cheer about. This team, they can manufacture goals. They can beat you in transition or settle. Eight points against Fairfield for Flannery. First round, quarterfinals, four points against Cornell. And he's got four points today here against Maryland. What an NCAA tournament for Dan Flannery, who's often overlooked with Tadowski Greer, the great Duke attack. Great play by Maryland. Charlie Wiggins with a long stick. Made a beautiful strip on that attempt running up field for Duke. 14-7 game here. As we saw the tremendous start by Duke. 5-1 in the first quarter after McGlone had started our scoring just a minute in. It's Maryland defense. I mean, Walters scored three goals in a row there. But Maryland's defense kind of searching for a leader. Remember how young they are. Sanoski's a freshman. Wittenberg, first year with the program after transferring from Air Force. Ray McGill, a youngster. The goalie, Harry Alford's a youngster. And I think without a leader, they mesh so well together late in the season. But when the wheels start falling off the cart here, they don't have a great senior leader they can turn to. Terps team up, 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 up. defense, 10th best in the nation, as we mentioned. However, Quinn, 14 goals surrendered today. That is a season low or high, depending on how you look at it, for right. Dave Connell in Maryland. New bed, new bed. We'll see All Duke. around outstanding game for Duke here today. Yeah, no shot clock in college across. We'll see Duke be patient in this fourth quarter. Danowski, got to get that back from Wittenberg, who's along the end line. Can't take it with you across that line. And Duke gets it right back. Aggressive ride from Donowski. You and I saw that last week at Princeton where a lot of attack they just let the charging long sticks go upfield. Instead, Donowski's laying out full dive after a big effort on the attack where he must have been exhausted. Never sells anyone short with effort. Loves to do the dirty work. When we spoke to him this week, he says he plays every play like it's his last, whether he has the ball or the other team has it. And I think that sends a great message to his teammates. Lenowski diving. Oh, shut down this time by Alford. There's some contact. Harry Alford makes a nice save on Donowski, the son of John Donowski, the Hofstra head coach. When your star player plays with that energy, mm -hmm. plays with that passion, as a lesser player on this team, you've got to rise up to his standard. Got to wonder how difficult the recruiting process was for Dad with Matt Donowski. You want him to get a great education, go to a good program. You're the head coach at Hofstra. Ended up coming. going to Duke. And the two Pick coaches, Danowski and Pressler, agreed mutually to Pick discontinue run. the series Pick while run. Matt is playing. Terps need a boost in a hurry. Long sticks have been a problem all day for them. It's O'Hara, who's got three points on the afternoon. He'll dump that off for the great Zach Rear. Maxson lost one. There's a surprise. But Greer will battle. Look at the ride. The How aggressive back. he can be Let's trying to get it. that ground ball back. Healy on the sideline trying to stay in bounds. Danowski, the big layout. What an effort. Penalty flag flies. Hold. Hold. And Danowski's going to go in. Zero. Hold. 30. Danowski's sixth penalty minute of the, of the season. Flannery's got six and a half minutes. Greer's got three. That's more than their defenders. So, so Duke's attack, because of their aggressive riding or forechecking, they have more fouls than the Duke defense. 34. I'm with you, partner. You see someone like Donowski laying out like that has to have a ripple effect yeah. with your teammates. Yeah. And with such your a great fans. such a great example for young players across the country watching our broadcast. You turn it over, the goalie makes a save on you, and your offensive player. Fight to get that ball back. Earn that ball back. Don't concede the clear. The MO, extra man opportunity here for the Terps. Erase quickly. Carroll, nice hit. And look at that. Causes the turnover. They were 0 for 1. And they'll be 0 for 2 thanks to Casey Carroll with a long stick. You heard the Duke defense call out wheel. That's a wheel play where you're going to see circular passing. They called it out before Maryland even started it. Give their defensive coordinator, Joe Alvarez, a lot of credit. Carroll, a well-scouted defensive possession right there. Look at Thompson, great work to split the double team. Thompson carries in, scores! Brett Thompson, the junior midfielder, not only evaded the double team at midfield, 
Charges all the way up and tallies again for Duke. It's 15-7, his first of the day. Short-handed, I believe. Thompson's the midfielder who plays on the man down unit, and that's why he's getting hounded. A little swim move. Again, in transition, Maryland's defense is not respecting. Penalty was released on the clear, but Thompson was in the game. He's a midfielder who plays on their man down unit. Everyone contributing offensively for Duke. Wiggins the ground ball for the Terps. Morrell helps swing around the box here for Maryland. Down by eight. In desperate need of a rally. McLone might have some answers. Left hand cradle. Ritz scores. Xander Ritz, the quick stick one time goal. His first of the day. From McGlone. And an athlete like Bill McGlone's going to draw a crowd. Watch a little split dodge. Right to left. Draws a double team, but there's no second help. And defensively, there, you got to push up field. Ritz's man came up field respecting McGlone. The two on one was created. Ritz catches, turns, and finishes. Stay off the line. Xander, two points last Take week against Georgetown in the quarterfinals. Set. Sixth career NCAA goal comes here today. Excellent clamp technique by Tamburino. You had a up close view of the way that's done. The sticks are four inches off the ball, and on the whistle, he clamps the head of his stick over the ball and rakes it out to himself or a teammate. Once again, great work inside its own box. Duke has been fabulous there all day. O'Hara with a long stick. McDevitt, who had to repeat ninth grade to go to the prestigious prep school in the Philadelphia area, got a football aid pack, a little scholarship. And his father said, you got to take advantage of the opportunity. 45-minute commute from New Jersey each way. But it's worth it. Repeated the year, excel in the football field, wrestling, basketball, just about everything, and eventually, an amazing story, first in his family to go to college, goes to Duke. He's carrying a 3.5 GPA right now, too, so he's not squandering that, that opportunity. Kid's an achiever. Quick work again, quick goal again for Duke. Dowd got free and buries yet another for the Blue Devils, Kyle Dowd, the junior. Dowd from Flannery. Pressler talks about making that extra pass, and this is, ball starts top left. You'll see one and then two. Step down towards the pass, catch one cradle, set your feet up before you catch it, and let it rip, folks. This ball is absolutely moving near my 90 miles an hour, I would guess, on that shot. Dowd just... Perfect precision shooting. Second of the day for Kyle Dowd. 16 goals, Quint. Eight different goal scorers for Duke. More balance. And the nation's leading offense excels once more. Here's Flannery, right hand cradle. He'll get things started. Kanowski again. Got that elbow up to ward off. Any attempts from Wittenberg to poke it loose. Why? Duke's just going to stay in their watch vanilla the offense. Wait, watch back side. They'll attack, but they'll take their time with it. Every time they get it, they should throw it around once or twice and then go to the goal. You don't want to stop playing entirely. You want to bring some momentum into watch Monday's watch championship watch game. Reed Seelig Mint. Top of the box pass. And we'll get it right back. Side. Together, Chance right? to play some reserves here and rest his top stars for Mike Preston. Why not? Eight goal lead and the ball. Keep in mind this Duke team, five and eight a year ago. They lost three heartbreakers last year. They started 17 freshmen and sophomores. Got some confidence in March with a win over Maryland. But they. Uh, have really, really exceeded everyone's expectations. They're for real, folks, and this is a team that returns next year fully intact. Flannery 
Seligman. Thought about a shot, but why do it with a big lead like this? Intercept. Wiggins with a long stick makes a nice play. And Charlie scoops up a loose ground ball. Walters had that hat trick third quarter. Great swim move. Keeps the ball in the winner. 